Welcome to another Forge Hub video. This is Psychodoc, and today I want to give a relatively brief overview of the lighting system in Halo 5's Forge mode. Now this lighting system has a ton of depth to it, and I'd love to get more in depth with that and make a more comprehensive guide to the lighting system down the road, but for now I want to just cover some of the basics. So in this video I'm going to talk about using spot and point lights to actually light spaces make them readable and more visible. And I'm also going to talk about using cones and gobos to create some nice aesthetic effects. So the first thing to keep in mind when you're lighting a map is that it needs to be readable. We did a design talk on this topic about a month ago, and readability is really how players perceive a space. Players need to be able to see a space and know what's going on. They need to be able to see that something is a wall or that something is a floor. They need to be able to see opposing Spartans and acquire targets easily. So if a space is too dark or has weird lighting, that readability becomes difficult. So on this map, this is actually Flying Shoes map, it's called Squid Ship. And this has kind of been my test bed for experimenting with some of the lighting uh, tricks in this game. So on this map, because it's kind of a Covenant-themed map, I used specifically invisible light. So you can use light fixtures, and they function identically, but just have an aesthetic fixture attached to them. We're using invisible lights on this map just because, uh, you know, it, it's a Covenant theme. So the first thing we have here is, I believe this light is a point light. And a point light is omnidirectional, which means that the light comes out of the light source in all directions. So when we're lighting this big central atrium here, a point light is perfect. And we have experimented with different colors on here. Uh, we used a lightish purple on here. And uh, the length is just simply the distance that light shines out of the light source. Uh, so 100 feet is relatively large because we're lighting a relatively large area. The brightness is important, but uh, I think the most important thing to keep in mind is the falloff ratio. And the reason that this is important is because it controls the transitions from lighted areas to non-lighted areas. So if we crank it up here, you can see we kind of get this very stark transition from this shaded area to this light area here. And I think it's best to avoid that because the more natural the light flows from one area to the next, the easier it is to read the space. And of course, you don't want any space to be too dark. So these tunnels could benefit from some extra lighting. For example, these tunnels down here could as well. But so that is a point light. It's a single point source that extends light in all directions. Now, over here, we have some spotlights. And here, uh, the only real difference is that a spotlight projects a cone of light. And that means that you can affect the angle of the cone. So you can make that angle wider if you want to cover a larger area. You can make it narrower. And of course, you really, again, just want to kind of bathe the area in enough light that you can sort of see the depth and contrast and really read the space. And again, uh, some of these areas could certainly benefit from more lighting still. Um, another thing that we have done on this map is we've used colors to create subtle differences from one side of the map to the other. So this is the blue side of the map, and we've used blue-violet lights. And on the red side of the map, we've used the exact same lights, the exact same properties, but we've used, uh, what is it, a deep violet? Yeah, a deep violet color because that's a bit redder. So we've created this sort of subtle differentiation between red side and blue side, which helps players orient themselves on the map. And really, I made one of these lights, and I just duplicated it. I found the sort of low falloff ratio I liked to create the sort of transitions I liked and I sort of extended the light to get a, a length that made sense for how high above the floors most of these lights were. And then I just started duplicating them, and I could continue to do this and start duplicating them, adding light to additional places. But so that is a spotlight. It's a directional light. And those are really nice for uh, creating specific, especially if you're using fixtures, because it's actually a, a light source projecting light directionally. 
instead of being omnidirectional like a point light. The next thing I want to show you guys is using a cone to create a sort of laser beam or a, a beam of light here. So we have a spotlight here and we have the length pretty long but we have a very narrow angle on this cone and a relatively high fall off ratio or I suppose more of a middle of the road fall off ratio but um, that creates this cone here and if the, the cone itself you can edit as well and that is sort of independent of the actual directional cone uh, from the light but uh, using either a wide cone or the light rays cone uh, with again a very narrow width uh, allows us to create this projected beam of light so that looks really cool and kind of helps uh, sell that covenant aesthetic on here the next thing I want to talk about is using gobos so over here we have this light bridge and if you see under it we kind of have this projection as if the light is coming through the bridge and projecting these uh, rays down here. So a gobo kind of projects an image from a light and, and it's a dynamic image, it moves. So here I've taken a spotlight and I've sort of tried to match the color of the light to the color of the light bridge itself. And again the length it's just long enough to project on the floor. Uh, the angle I don't think I really messed with too much. Uh, it's not too bright, it's fairly subtle here but then if we go down to gobo we have this data stream effect and of course there are a bunch of other cool effects too some of these are downright distracting and obnoxious uh, but uh, I think this data stream looks really cool it's just a subtle touch this isn't a readability thing this is just an atmospheric thing that helps add some pizzazz to the map along with the falling snow and all that and those are important to keep in mind too, but of course the readability of actually lighting a space so that it's bright enough for target acquisition to be po possible is really important. So you can see, uh, if you look at my hands here, my Spartan is very much in the light. And then over here it's a little bit darker, so I might want to add some extra lights over here. But anyway, those are some of the basics of the lighting in this game. Uh, I think that using spotlights to uh, light you know, directional uh, light sources using point lights to light large areas. I think those are the, the main takeaways, but also these cool tricks with like the laser beam, uh, the gobos can really help sell uh, the theme of a map and kind of liven up the space a bit. And if you combine that with other atmospheric effects like the snow, it looks really cool. And again, using the subtle differences in color from one side of the map to the other is something I would highly recommend on a symmetrical map. So hopefully that helps. Uh, we will be covering uh, more of the lighting system down the road with a more in-depth video, but uh, I just wanted to get some of the basics out to you guys. So hopefully you find this helpful, and I'll talk to you guys next time. Thanks for watching.